Hi, I'm uh, Ryan Olson uh, from here from Seattle. Daniel Fortine, Seattle also. Yeah, and we also had uh, Steve over here who uh, helped us with this collab as well. But uh, this is a Battle of the Warp Gate, and um, it's uh, multiple human fleets coming together and uh, getting uh, repelling this alien invasion that's coming out of this uh, Black Stargate here. And uh, there's a huge swarm of uh, enemy fighters here attacking uh, attacking all the fleets. So. Um, Dan, uh, Dan did the uh, alien fleet with the warp gate and uh, the red ships here, the red fleet, and um, I did the dark gray ones, and Steve did the uh, the other multicolor ones here over, over here. And one of the ideas I had for the aliens was that they grow their ships from biological mass initially, and then they can add engines and, and things to it later. So the idea would be that once the aliens win this battle, and we talked about next year, the aliens have taken over all the destroyed ships and made them hybridized alien ships. So that'd be like an alien hybrid ship attacking some other, like the last human outpost that didn't take part in this war uh, for next year. So that's, that's the idea behind that. Yeah, so talk about kind of the techniques you used for some of the ships there and then also kind of the whole portal itself. Sure, so the circle I used for the portal was a technique I've used before in smaller ships. Like last year I had a Guild Highlander from Dune that had a series of cylinders connected together by plates. And it's basically just click hinges and and snap bricks that hook together with the regular hinges to create a, a nice supportive structure as you get bigger. And I've never made it this big before, but I've done smaller versions. I used it in the sandworm last year as well to get a nice round um, segment for the sandworm. And so um, I just we, we used a, a Lego model to kind of make sure it would still work at a larger scale. We mapped it out with the LDD, I think it was, and uh, we created 36 segments. They're eight sets long each. And then also the, the wedge plates, every other section is wedged and straight. So the wedge plates help support some of the weight uh, around the edges because they're all flush. So yeah, that was, that's how we did that. Yeah. And we, we disassembled it for the first time on Thursday, so we didn't know for sure if it was going to work, but we, I was pretty confident that it would, yeah. yeah. And then the aliens, uh, I had the idea uh, basically making them look kind of like insects because they have a really cool, um, a lot of inspiration comes from insect parts and insect uh, designs. So. I kind of started with that and wanted a nice vertical uh, ship so that when they come out of the gate, you could have three or four you know, at once coming out at the same time. Uh, and so that's where that idea came from. Very impressive. And if you want to talk about your fleet now? Yeah, sure. Well, one thing we try to do that uh, we haven't seen a lot at shows we've been to is try to have like a bit uh, more dynamic scene. So we're having a lot more like weapon effects, like shooting uh, railgun projectiles or laser blasts, or uh, we have the alien fighters hitting the shields. So you have like shield impacts on the ships. And um, we try to like get the ships up off the table a lot more, so a lot higher stands. Uh, most of the time when you see fleets, they're, they're really down low and they feel more like naval battle engagements. And, and yeah, instead of a maximum you know, space three dimensions, you know? Yeah, so uh, yeah, my ships here are kind of like a united human faction and um, try to keep the design elements, you know, cohesive, same kind of engines on each fleet, uh, each ship type and, um, you know, similar uh, color stripings and things like that to make them look cohesive. So are the stands, you build all the ships first and then kind of build the stands and try to position them the way you want? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, these stands here, they're fairly simple. They're Technic beams, um, kind of cantilevered uh, at an angle. So the ships kind of are, are angled to the public so they can see like the tops and the sides a little bit better. Yeah, since we were building so many height in our stands, we wanted to make sure that we didn't just show profiles. So a lot of our stands are lean like that so that we can have other ships kind of anchored to the sides, get different levels. Again, creating that dynamic height so we wouldn't have like a jump gate that's this high and a bunch of ships down here. You know, we wanted to make sure it was kind of evenly spaced vertically and visually. So, and, then, and, then, and the small fighters that were light enough allowed us to attach them directly to all the ships. So rather than having a bunch of small fighters on their own stands and feeling like it hasn't quite started the battle, this really makes it feel like there's an investment here. They're, they're, they're in it. There's too late for them to back out, and they're totally uh, committed to the battle. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think you guys did a great job here. I love the layout. So thanks for talking to me about it. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank very you. much. Yeah.